start our reading at verse 1 it says and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and this taxing was first made uh, when Serenius the governor of Syria and all went to be taxed every one into his own city and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end can you say there was no room for them in the end and there were the same, in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Can you say with me, The Savior which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You may be seated. My title this morning is There's room in the manger. There may not have been room in the end, but there's room in the manger. This is a different, this will be a different Christmas message than you've ever heard. So buckle your seatbelts, brace yourself. It's going to be all directly out of the word. God laid this on my heart to just lay it out there for you directly out of the word. It is Irrefutable. The question has been asked and has been uh, bantered about for 1986 years. About who exactly was in the manger. Everyone who believes in Christ understands that it was Jesus in the manger. But there's a lot of debate about just who Jesus is. Is Jesus the Son of Man? Is Jesus the Son of God? Is Jesus God manifested in flesh? Is he God the Father? We're going to figure that out. I'm going to clear up 1,986 years of debate in in just a few minutes. And every one of you, whenever you leave this place, you're going to know exactly who was in the manger. All right. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and you're going to have to go fast with me this morning. We're going to be rocking out the scriptures. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor. I would like for everyone to say with me, The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. Chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Moving on to the next verse, Matthew chapter 1. Oh, that's great. Good job. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise, when as his mother Mary had espoused to Joseph before they came together, She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, he minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. Take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. 
Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Wait a second. A baby God. You're telling me that this poor kid laying in the manger because they didn't have room in the hotel, that this poor kid laying in a feed trough, that his parents were traveling quite a ways to be taxed, that this little baby that is helpless, who entered into this world as helpless as you and I did, he was dependent for everything. God... who robed himself in flesh, was dependent. He was completely humbled. Whenever you are a child, do you understand? How many of you have had children? You understand that uh, there's a smell every now and then, right? If I had really realized that smell, we might be childless. I don't know. But, you know, you got to feed that kid. you got to change that child. He is dependent. She is dependent upon you for everything. That child has no pride, has no bias, has no hatred. It just is dependent for everything. It's dependent to be taught. And that's how Jesus entered into this world was as a child. You say, but a baby God. How can that be? I thought there was only one God. Well, let's read about that. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, And without him, who are they talking about? Without him was not anything made that was made. So the creator God, let's read that again. Put that back up here. All things that were made by him and without him, the word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. And a little baby boy, and it dwelt among us. And he created everything. He made everything that was made. This little baby created everything that was ever made. All right, that's in John chapter 1. Well, that's the New Testament. Let's see what God has to say in the Old Testament. All right, you say, well, how could this baby God create everything that was made? He was just born. Well, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer. Who is the Redeemer? There's only one Redeemer. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. Yeshua HaMashiach, who came in the form of a man, who laid his head in a manger, He made everything that there was by himself. Either that or somebody's not telling the truth. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him all things were created in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Can you say amen? Amen. 
Isaiah chapter 44 and 6, we're going back into the Old Testament. All right, we were in the New Testament just then. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Thus saith the Lord, the, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Now let's go to the New Testament, Revelation chapter 22, verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. I am the Alpha, no. for in him all the fullness of, the God, of God was pleased to dwell. The original says, all the fullness of the God had dwelled in him. Please go to the King James on that. John chapter 10, verse 24, back to the New Testament. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Okay? And Jesus said, and Let's continue to 30. Let's go on to 30. 24 through 30. Jesus answers them, I told you, and you believe me not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Keep going. But I but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them to me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father It did not say, I and my Father are one mind. It did not say that I and my Father have one nature. Is Jesus telling the truth when he said, I and my Father are one? Whenever he asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And some of them said, well, you're this prophet, that prophet, some Elias. He said, no, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say Jesus is? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. Told you it's a lot of scriptures. Bless Mitzi's heart. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God. And Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Wasn't Jesus called the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace? Philippians chapter 2, this spells it out quite well. And I'm going somewhere with this. I promise you I am. There's a curve in the road that's coming very quickly, so get your thinking caps on. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross he also was obedient uh, he was also obedient to the birth in a manger wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things of earth and things under the earth hallelujah hallelujah So who was in the manger? God Almighty. I've just proven to you without a doubt that God Almighty was laying in the manger. He took on the form of a man. That word that was God became flesh and dwelt among us. 
and took on the form of a servant. But why? Why would God do that? Why would God ever do that? 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, or verse 1, I'm sorry. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. He repeats it again. And it doth not yet appear, I want you to understand this, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Stop right there. I want you to open up your mind for just a second. I've just established that this little boy that was laid in a manger because there was no room in the hotel for him, that he was God manifested in the flesh. All right, so this scripture here says, Beloved, know that you're, don't you know that you're the sons of God? And it does not yet appear as to what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Like who? Like God. Why do you think the devil hates you so bad? Hadn't heard the right answer yet. No, I was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Adam was made in his image. What? Yeah, so was the devil. You're on to something, though, that no matter how hard Satan tried, because Satan was not born to be like God. Adam was born to be like God. Adam was a son of God. As we who have received his spirit and received his cleansing become sons and daughters of God, you understand that Satan wanted that position. That's why he hates you so bad. That's why he wants to destroy you so badly because you are a son of the living God. And every day, just like he wanted to destroy Jesus, just like he thought that once he was crucified, I won the battle. He wakes up every morning trying to destroy every one of us. And that's why. If you've ever wondered, why will the devil not ever leave me alone, Aaron? Why do I struggle every day? Jesus struggled every day too. It's because you're taking the place. You have the potential to take the place that he never did. He was an angel he was not a son or a daughter. And so it's jealousy and covetousness that drives him. We will be changed and we will be like him. Some people would say that's heresy. That's what the scripture says. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ... If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Do you begin to understand what you are? You are to inherit the kingdom of God. We are all, if we enter in the same way, what you have to say, not everyone will inherit the kingdom. That's true. A lot of people will go to hell. Say, so why are you talking about hell on Christmas? Hell is a very real place. It is where the flame is not quenched and the worm dieth not. But you don't have to go there. There has been a made a way for you, a way of escape for you. If you're willing to enter in the same way that he was, humbly and dependent for everything, 
You understand you can't, you can't enter into the kingdom of God through your importance. You can't enter into the kingdom of God through your pride. Matthew chapter 18, verse 2. And Jesus called a little child unto him and said unto him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So I can't come to him in my pride, in my self-security, in my self-destination. I can't come to him. Please stand with me. If you would, please play Sister Crystal. I can't come to him if I've got it all figured out. If you've got it figured out, you're dismissed. Nobody left. I'm glad I'm not the only one that doesn't have it figured out. If you'd all left, I'd have been like, no, what's wrong with me? Salvation is not a transaction. I want you to understand that I want every person in Christianity today has made salvation transactional. That if I'm willing to say this prayer, if I'm willing to count this many beads, if I'm willing to do this or that or the other thing, that God will save me. It's not a transaction. It's a transformation. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. You know, the Lord Jesus was willing to leave the trappings of the throne room of heaven and come to us in the form of a servant so that we might know him, we might touch him, that we might have an opportunity to experience him and so that he might lay down his life so that we might be saved. What kind of God would do that? You have to ask yourself, am I willing to lay aside all the trappings of this earthly life? Like my cousin said, my empire of dirt. Am I willing to lay aside all the trappings of this life and make it of no importance? Am I willing to humble myself? Come to him in my dependence, not in my independence. There was no room in the end for him, but there was room in the manger. He said to Nicodemus, you must be born again must be born again you must be born again of water and of the spirit if if we are willing to humble ourselves on this Christmas service and come to him in the form of a child there's room in the manger for you sons and daughters of God are being born all over the world today Will you be one of them? Or do you have it all figured out? Has God spoken a word into your heart this morning? Or you just, you know what? I'm good. I know it's Christmas, but I'm going to open these altars. Because I'll tell you, and I'm going to go to them. Because I'll tell you the truth, I don't have it all figured out. I'm a work in progress. But because I know that, that's what makes me a son of God. Because we know that we don't know. Because that we know that we can't deal with it. We're completely dependent upon you, God, for everything. We're dependent upon you for our salvation. 
We're dependent upon you for our next breath. And because I know that, because you know that, we are sons and we are daughters. Let's pray. What a beautiful name.